Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some of my May favorites. The month of May was a really poor reading month. I spent a lot of May sick. I'm still sick right now. Currently taking a crap ton of antibiotics for a sinus and chest infection and have some lovely cracked ribs from a coughing fit. So not a lot of reading happened. Um, and the books that I did read were... I am going to be doing a May reading wrap-up where you can hear little mini reviews for all of that, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Because I don't have a favorite book to share, I'm going to share the next closest thing, uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, it's going to be shameless self-plug. So I have released the first episode of the Dark Tower series, this next installment of the videos, season two, shall we say, to my patrons. Um, so patrons in tiers two and three get early access to videos, and right now they have access to the first video there, which is just me talking off the cuff about the notes that I made in the seventh book in the Dark Tower series. The videos are going to be going there first, just for a little bit. They will eventually be coming to YouTube. There's a lot of pressure behind these videos now because it's been so long, and I decided it would be good just for myself, for my own peace of mind, to sort of test the waters with my patrons and get their response to the series so that as I continue editing I can sort of tweak anything guess if you're interested in becoming a patron, if you want to see that video, you want to see it now, the link to the Patreon page is in the description box down below. If not, you should see it in the next few weeks or so, at some point in June. I was incredibly nervous, but it was such a relief to have that video go live to my patrons. I'm so excited to get this out there um, because I have lists of projects that I want to do. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to start something new. So I'm excited to finally share what has been two years worth of research and writing and filming and editing. So that is probably my favorite thing that I have accomplished this month. So the next closest thing to books would be podcasts, entertainment, and so my favorite podcast from this month is This Podcast Will Kill You. Um, if you are into the morbid, if you are into history, if you are into science, I would highly recommend This Podcast Will Kill You. So two disease epidemiologists? They study disease, they study the history of disease, are doing little episodes talking about various diseases. And it is absolutely fascinating, a little bit horrifying, definitely gonna make sure I'm up to date on all of my vaccines the next time I go to my doctors. Because if you were ever in doubt about vaccines, once you hear about how vaccines are made, I think that's my favorite thing, is their two-part episode on vaccines. Um, phenomenal. I loved it. I think it's super important. It's convinced me. Um, I have resisted getting the HPV vaccine for years, basically since it came out. Like, what? Like it's now mandatory in schools, I believe. It's given in schools. As a child, when it was offered, uh, your parents have to consent to it, and my mom talked to other healthcare professionals, pharmacists, etc. at the time, and like the advice that she was given was like, wait a little bit because this is a new vaccine, let's see how people react to it. Once you're out of school and nobody's like, hey, you want this vaccine? It just sort of disappeared. Um, but apparently almost all cases of cervical cancer are linked to HPV. So this is a vaccine that literally prevents cancer. How cool is that? So the next time I go to my doctor for a checkup, I'm getting that vaccine. So I loved the podcast. It's great. It's horrifying. It's historical. It checks a lot of my boxes. While I was feeling like a slug with my lungs not working, I was listening to that podcast and I highly recommend it. I guess trigger warnings, I guess. If you are hypochondriac, if you know that you are very likely to start uh, self-diagnosing yourself and that will stress you out, definitely skip it. Um, because they do go quite in depth on what the disease looks like and how the disease spreads through a population. So if that is a type of thing that will uh, stress you out, definitely skip it. But if you are okay with taking in that 
type of knowledge without going into some sort of destructive mental health spiral, check it out. Speaking of diseases, one of my favorites from this month has been free healthcare in Canada. I have seen my doctor, haven't had to pay for it. I got some chest x-rays, multiple x-rays, and I didn't have to pay for it. I am so thankful because I know that x-rays are expensive. Dental isn't covered. And so when I had my dental done, I got charged, I think, $300? $200 or $300 for an x-ray of my face to make sure that my, like, wisdom teeth were healing and stuff. <laughs> they took so many x-rays. I can only imagine, like, that was one x-ray that I got charged at the dentist. I can only imagine what it would have cost for x-raying my whole torso from different angles. So, incredibly thankful for the coverage that we have. So I have two food things to share. So one of them is nutritional yeast. So, if you've been following along, you know that I would like to be vegan eventually. And I have tried going vegan cold turkey before and gave it up because there's only so many like soups and salads and smoothies that one human can eat. And because I have other dietary issues, it gets old real fast. So I am slowly going vegan, building my repertoire of recipes that I know how to cook without a recipe. Cause like, think about it right now. Like you probably know how to cook quite a few meals without a cookbook and like they're tasty, they're quick, they're go-to. So one of the biggest things for me and one of the hardest things to give up was dairy because grilled cheese is something that I can make gluten-free and put a whole bunch of variation on it and like that's a great quick meal. Like throw a handful of carrots, celery, cucumber, whatever, with grilled cheese and bam, you got a dinner. So uh, cheese has been really hard to give up. So uh, in learning to make other things, I have been sticking nutritional yeast on things. Now let me be 100% honest as a human that has eaten dairy recently enough not to have forgotten how it tastes. This tastes nothing like cheese. Um, I think it's just like psychological. It makes me feel better to, or at least I guess it makes me feel less left out. So like if everybody's eating pasta and they've got beautiful melty shredded cheese on their pasta or lovely parmesan on their pasta and I've got plain sauce on my gluten-free noodles, it makes me feel sad. Like my meal is sad and unworthy. So sprinkling something that stinks kind of like cheese and is yellow kind of like cheese on the pasta makes me feel better about my meal. Adding it to the top of things like salads and pasta and pizza. Oh, I did pizza this month. It's great. Uh, bake the nutritional yeast onto the pizza like mix it with the sauce, because uh, I, I made two pizzas actually, and I sprinkled it on the top, and you will, as you like, go to take a bite, you will inhale your nooch. Yes, but I am enjoying nooch, and I am enjoying cutting dairy out completely. The other thing that I have been loving is uh, brewing coffee at home. So right now, I have a fun specialty bag of whole bean butter pecan coffee. It smells like candy. It's fucking delicious. It makes the whole kitchen smell great. And I have been putting it, excuse the dirty French press, but I, I was drinking coffee. Um, I've been putting it in a French press. Actually, the mug that I take to work fits this much coffee. So I have a caffeine problem, but it's perfect. I love it. Um, this means that I buy less coffee from Starbucks because uh, I work at an Indigo and our Indigo is attached to a Starbucks. Like we sh literally share a door. But yeah, because it's attached, I go there for coffee every day. I've got all the tricks to get the, the cheapest coffee, but still at 2.15 for a small, it was six bucks for this whole bag and I have had coffee multiple times a day for a week and a half. So, you know, 
saving money. But yeah, I'm having fun. Speaking of work, I, uh, I have a little backpack. So I bought a new backpack for work because my old one I have had since my first year at Indigo, I bought it at Indigo. The zipper fell apart, which meant that when I was like throwing it over my shoulder, I was like tossing the debris that sits in the bottom of my work bag out, losing like pens and cough candies and chapstick. So I bought myself a new backpack. And because I am small, this is a children's backpack. And uh, so this is a kid's Parkland backpack and it is adorable. It has a little front pocket. It has a little side pocket that I keep my reusable bag in and my hand soap in in case wherever I have hand soap at work because that happens. And it has little sharks all over it and every once in a while there's a shark with a little fishy in his mouth that says no. And yeah, I'm a child at heart and you know, in size, so it's perfect because I didn't, like I got a staff discount on this and uh, because it's a children's backpack, it's way cheaper, but it's still like the nice quality of the adult Parkland backpacks that we carry. So I'm excited to carry around my shark backpack. So that was a, a necessary purchase. This was a splurge, but a justifiable splurge, okay? And uh, it is this shark tote bag because look at this shark. Look at these fucking sharks, they're so cute. Okay, so, reason I bought this bag. I have been getting into crocheting, which I will tell you more about in a minute. And uh, I've been taking this out and about with me, like the grandma that I am. I was using a like floppy shopping bag for it. And so if you put the bag down, it flops over and then your yarn ends up on the floor of like cafes and breweries. And then for whatever reason, I'm not, I, I flung a ball of yarn into the man next to me's lap twice. Like, I just in like pulling it out of this floppy bag, I flung this yarn into his crotch. And I would like to avoid that. So I have now a nice sturdy bag. Now, what I particularly like about this is it has a loop that's meant for uh, water bottles. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it past the thing, there's a little loop. And so what I'm hoping is I can feed the thread of what I'm working through, through that loop, so that the ball of yarn, when I pull on it, will never fling into anyone's crotch ever again. The next thing that I have loved doing this month is propagating my plants. This is the wrong angle, let me flip you around. I brought in my uh, grandmother's antique singer. Don't worry, I don't water the plants on here. Also, the top is already damaged from like 50 plus years of actually using, like this is still a functional show sewing machine. Like if she had space for it in her house, she'd be using it. So I have a pothos here that, uh, this is a marble pothos that I'm working on making bushier. And so to do that, like this guy, this is Queen Lalifa. And uh, she is nice and bushy because she hasn't been allowed to dangle. And so I have been chopping the leaves off and uh, I'm actually getting some new growth. See the new growth here? So these are all new leaves, which is exciting. So this is what I did with the pothos that I cut. And as you can see, grown roots. Put some rooting hormone in there, getting little roots, which is exciting. I also took a really leggy jade plant and I snipped them all off and I, I put them in different things and they are growing. So I've got three of those. I've got the leggy jade where I cut it off. Look at its new little growth. It's so cute. This thing. This is its baby. And uh, it seems to be doing okay. Those are my plants. I have been really enjoying taking care of them. I love how they make this space look. I know I have a little bit of a too much gene. Plants are one of those things, but I also have a lot of uh, lung issues, so having clean air is super important to me. This is the only space in my space 
that will take these plants because this is the space that gets the most light. The last thing that I'm gonna show you is my crochet. All right, so remember that I said I have a little bit of a too much gene. Ta-da! I have a lot of yarn from old projects. I already made one of these. Scrap yarn, granny hexagon blanket. This was a bitch to put together. So I decided what is more fun than a scrap yarn granny square blanket. There's going to be, I think, two more rows on here to make it a little bit more square. Then I'm gonna put a border on it and it's almost done. I have been working on a project that I really enjoy and this is like my my fave. This is my favorite thing. The ends have to be sewn in. But this is a little lap blanket that is very autumnal. It's a lot of my favorite colors. I love this burgundy. So I have a lot of yarn. It is something that I am fully aware of, but I also am finding it very relaxing. It is something that I can do with my hands while I watch TV or listen to podcasts or audiobooks. It's never something that I just sit down and do in isolation. It's always something that I sort of multitask with. And it's something that I'm really enjoying. I'm particularly enjoying the granny square blanket because I really like seeing this stuff not go to waste. I like finding a way to repurpose this stuff rather than throwing it out. So that has been a super fun thing as well. It's one of the favorite things that I started really doing again this month. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you have been loving in the month of May. Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Speaking of my patrons, last minute favorite is this tripod with this doodaddy here. So if you don't know what this is, this is a thing to attach a camera to that then you can point the camera down at the ground or down at a desk or whatever. The funds from my patrons this month went towards purchasing this tripod and this arm so that I could film the last Dark Tower episode. It was an episode that I was putting off refilming for so long because I didn't have the equipment to do it, and when I did a little test with just flipping my camera down, I ended up with tripod legs in it and it looked really bad. And like the whole video is going to be a top-down shot. It's gonna be looking at the books as material objects. I decided to take the funds that my patrons have provided me with and purchase the equipment to make filming that easy and visually appealing. Let's give a big shout out to the folks on screen right now. These folks enable me to produce higher quality content. So not only are they helping me out, but they are helping me to produce a product for all of your eyeballs. So let's give them a big shout out. Let's say thank you because their support is awesome. If you are interested in becoming a patron, links to that are in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.